Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Russian political parties. Today's episode was requested by TL 11 on YouTube. If you want me to make an episode on another country's political parties, please send me an email, comment it down below, or put your request in my suggestion forum. I should have it in the description. I currently have requests to do Portuguese parties, French parties, French territorial politics, Romanian parties, Spanish parties, Indian parties, which I think I'm going to break into three episodes, Malaysian parties, Italian parties, Danish parties, the Chinese United Front, and many more. So Russia is unlike many of the other countries I have talked about. Generally, I have talked about multi-party liberal democracies, with all of them having their own flaws and quirks present within their democratic system, but ultimately still mostly fair, and with some level of equal opportunity for all parties to succeed in. However, many people, especially Westerners and particularly Western liberals, would argue that Russia isn't really a democracy, and it's more of an authoritarian dictatorship with addressings of a democracy. I think in many ways, this is correct. Russian politics are dominated by the current president Vladimir Putin and his allies, hold a tight grip over the country, and often will make it difficult for opposition candidates to register and run against them, with allegations of voter fraud popping up from time to time, and recently in this election, candidates finding themselves running against candidates that suspiciously have the same name and hairstyle as them. However, I think it would be wrong to say that there's absolutely no democracy in Russia. There are opposition parties that do run and operate. Putin and his allies do have plenty of genuine supporters who like what he has done. And there are political parties that represent different strands of Russian thought present in the country. Putin and his allies aren't running unopposed in this year's most recent election, which will be taking place from September 17th to the 19th. It's just that politics in Russia are very controlled. It's hard to register or run as an opposition candidate, and it's likely Putin's allies will win a fifth election in a row. Many Russian political parties can fall into either three camps. Number one, there is the pure establishment parties, who back Putin and his government and either put up no or little resistance to him and his allies. On the other end of the spectrum, there are those who are pure opposition, and will generally and genuinely oppose Putin and his government and hope to fundamentally transform the country. Finally, there are those in the middle, what are sometimes called systemic opposition, Mian operates and opposes the government in the legislature, but often won't criticize the government too much, and operates as Western sources often put it, as puppets of the Kremlin. Keeping all this in mind when we look at the parties present, I will go from what I see as the most pro-Putin party, to the least pro-Putin party. The election taking place is for the state Duma, the main legislative body in the country. The Duma is made up of 450 deputies, Half of the deputies are elected via first-past-the-post from 225 constituencies all over Russia, meaning that whoever gets the most votes in each constituency will be elected into the Duma. The remaining half are elected via proportional representation, with parties required to get at least 5% of the vote in order to pass the electoral threshold, and thus into the Duma. The Duma will confirm the Prime Minister of Russia, who will help write laws and regulations, along with reviewing laws and political appointees passed by the President of Russia, who holds most decision-making power in the country. There also is a Federation Council, which is made up of 170 senators. These senators are elected via the federal subjects found throughout Russia, who will have their own regional government. Each subject's regional government will send two senators to represent their region in the council. The council will review laws passed by the Duma, create laws and work on issues concerning federalism in Russia and its federal subjects, and can theoretically impeach the president of Russia, but that is very unlikely. The Federation Council is officially nonpartisan, so we won't pay too much attention to it. Finally, Russia is a federation made up of 85 federal subjects. Well, 83 if you reject Russia's annexation of Crimea, which are divided between oblast, republics, kreis, autonomous okregs, federal cities, and a single autonomous oblast. I'm not going to get into the differences between the six classifications, but each subject has its own regional parliament and governor. These subjects have varying levels of autonomy, and are in theory independent from the federal government. But, the Russian state often is able to apply pressure to these regional governments to make them... correct their path if they stray too far from government policy. So now that I've given enough background, let's start with the parties. First off, we have the ruling party of Russia, Yedina Rosia, or United Russia. United Russia is the party of power in Russia, 
and if you want to get any job in the ruling cabinet, you will either have to be a member of the party, or cozy up to the party and its allies. Ideologically, you can broadly say it's conservative, just in the sense that it wants to conserve Russian strength and opposes wide-scale reform or change. But the party shouldn't be looked at like the conservatives in the UK or the Republicans in America. They don't really have a firm ideological grasp, except that they think things are mostly fine in Russia and like Putin. So you have people that come from both the left and the right in Russian society who will back the party. Party supporters tend to be teachers, students, entrepreneurs, or come from the public sector, are members of the armed forces, or state pensioners, who all rely on the state and the status quo for their livelihood. They also are often found in the Caucasus, southern Russia, the Volga region, central Russia, and some of the far northern regions. They currently have 336 seats in the state Duma, and 58 regional governors are members of the party. The chairman of the party is Dmitry Medvedev, who has served as both the president and prime minister of Russia while under Putin, and is currently the deputy chairman of the Security Council. While neither President Putin nor Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin are members of the party, both are affiliated with party members. United Russia is the party of the status quo. It is very supportive of Putin and generally falls in line with whatever Putin says and does. This means it supports greater powers for the presidency, favors a Russia that is very involved in the affairs of neighboring countries, while also attempting to fight back against the influence of NATO and the EU at home and abroad, and favors socially conservative policies. While backing a Russian version, I suppose you could call it on tolerance and multiculturalism. The party in this election has also promised to clean up corruption within Russia and to implement more direct democracy within the country. It also wants to increase spending in order to raise Russians' income and wants to invest more in public transport and infrastructure. Since United Russia has been the ruling party of Russia for the past 20 years, any complaints people have with Russia are also complaints people will have with the party. Some of these complaints include opposition towards homophobic laws, the widespread crackdown on the opposition in the country, and what some have called the imperialist foreign policy Russia has carried out. However, I will also say a lot of those specific criticisms, while certainly brought up by some Russians opposed to Putin, tend to be pushed very hard by Western journalists and politicians, and can fail to resonate with the wider Russian public. I'd say some of the more Russian complaints people have about the party tend to focus on corruption present in the party, the failure of the party to halt the declining birth rate of Russia, and the fact that many Russians struggle with alcoholism and poverty, something that they might feel the party has failed to solve. Recently, Putin and United Russia raised the pension age, which created backlash, and the party is currently averaging around 35% of the vote in polls, far above the other parties present, but also at its lowest since the early 2010s. Next we go to the Verestitskia Politskia Partia Rodina, or All Russian Political Party Rodina, or simply Rodina. Rodina is a nationalist party and a right wing party. It was formed as first as an opposition party, but since 2011 has grown closer to the United Russia Party, and has even been accused of being created by the Kremlin to steal votes away from the nationalistic opposition parties. It is a part of the All Russian People's Front a coalition of political parties that are pro-Putin and headed by United Russia. And in 2018, it endorsed Putin in the presidential race that year. It saw its best results in the last election in the Tambrov Oblast, the Altai Republic, Ingushtia, and Moscow, although the party is very small and only got 1.5% of the vote in the last election. It currently has one deputy in the Duma, which is held by party leader Alexei Zhrovlyov. In case you couldn't tell, I'm really not good with Russians, so I apologize if I'm butchering all these names. Rodina is a patriotic party, holding socially conservative values, and often expresses them in a very... provocative way. For example, in 2005, it showed an ad of immigrants from the Caucasus littering on the streets, and then asking Russians to, quote, clean up their cities of trash. They also will favor a strong government, wanting to give greater power towards the central government and away from regional or local governments, wants more government involvement in the economy, and wants more penalties on those who pollute the environment. The party also wants to do more to help small businesses, and strongly opposes the West, and particularly Western liberals. We have another party in the all-Russian people's front, the Vrivde Rosia Zepravduv, or A Just Russia for Truth, or SRZP. A Just Russia is a center-left social democratic party that backs Putin. It was originally founded in 2006 as a moderate opposition party, but since 2012 it has been fairly loyal to Putin, endorsing him in the latest presidential election. 
It historically has also grown by absorbing other parties that hold generally left-wing economic views and are pro-Putin, with the latest occurring earlier this year, when the For Truth and Patriots for Russia party merged into it. It gets most of its support in northern Russia, the Urals, and the Far East. It currently has 23 seats in the Duma, and the governors of Chuvashia and the Omsk Oblast are members of the party. It is currently headed by Sergei Mirnova, a former senator and current deputy in the Duma. Also, for the last election, Mirnova released a video where an animated version of himself raps against his communist opponent. I don't know if there's a translated version of it anywhere out there, but if there is, please send it to me. I'd love to see what sick rhymes this 68-year-old Russian political figure can put down. A Just Russia supports increasing welfare, education, and healthcare spending, backs a progressive tax system, wants to increase wages, and wants to spend more money on ensuring all Russians become employed. It wants a universal basic income for all Russians, opposes pension reform, and is pro-death penalty. It also wants to crack down on corruption, is pro-life, wants to integrate the separatist-controlled region of the Donbass into Russia, supports direct elections into the Federation Council, and backs a strong Russia geopolitically. A just Russia generally gets criticized for just being a united Russia puppet, and not really standing out as a party. The communists have criticized the party for being too moderate and not left-wing enough when Mirnova talked of merging the two together. There also has apparently been a theme of Islamophobia within the party, but I just found one source from 2010 saying that, so I don't know how deep that strand of thought is within the party today. After that, we have the Grazdanska Platforma, or Civic Platform Party. Civic Platform is a conservative party. It originally was created as a party to serve as a platform for center-right independents to get elected and serve as a bridge between the government and opposition forces. However, after the party's founder left, it grew more pro-government, and in the 2018 election, it endorsed Putin as president. It generally gets support from entrepreneurs, and gets most of its votes from the Murmansk Oblast, although it only got 1.13% of the vote in that region, and in Russia overall, it only got 0.22% of the vote. So, really, it's a fairly fringe party that I'm skeptical will be relevant after the election. It does have one deputy in the state Duma, Rifat Shikodinov, who is also the leader of the party. Civic Platform is largely focused on ensuring Russia can be stable and that markets can grow. It wants to reform the economic structure of Russia by increasing financial and industrial infrastructure, wants to heavily reduce taxes on small businesses and entrepreneurs, and wants to grow closer economically with Eastern Europe, the Middle East, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia. It does favor political reform by introducing e-democracy into the country, and wants direct elections to the Federation Council, and wants greater powers to the state Duma, although it also strongly opposes liberalism in the country, and argues that the military should become the country's new elite. It also wants to invest more in cultural activities throughout Russia, favors educational reform, wants to crack down on drug use in the country, both by modernizing and expanding the healthcare sector, and also seemingly create a militia to fight off street gangs. Next, we have the Liberal No Demokratitsiya Parti Rossiya, or the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia, or LDPR. It is a right-wing populist and strongly nationalistic party, with some even going so far as to call them fascist, so not very liberal. They stand opposed to both communism and Marxism and neoliberal capitalism. They are often considered to be a part of the constructive opposition, with the party softballing a lot of their critiques towards the government. And while they did run against Putin in the last election, they do ultimately back Putin at the end of the day, although the LDPR can rebel against Putin and be used as an outlet for public dissatisfaction. Like in 2020, when a popular LDPR governor was removed, resulting in massive protest in his region, and his supporters coming out in force. It gets most of its support in Siberia, the Far East, and to a certain extent, Northern Russia. The party currently has 40 seats in the Duma, and the governors of Harbarnovsky Krai and the Smolensk and Vladimir Oblast are members of the party. It is currently headed by Vladimir Zirovnovsky, a member of the State Duma, and the former deputy chairman of the Duma. The LDPR is noted for being a party that openly advocates for Russia to expand its borders. It wants all the territory that made up the USSR to be brought back under Russian rule, although they specify that this should be done exclusively through referendum, and argues that NATO should be countered militarily. It favors socially conservative policy, like promoting Orthodox Christianity, opposing abortion, wants to make it so only Russian is shown on street signs, wants to punish foreign regimes for introducing what the party calls Russian-phobic laws, and wants to make it so only 10% of the airtime on news channels can be about negative things going on in Russia. It also wants to set a minimum wage, 
reduce taxes for the poor, wants to abolish the single-member electoral districts, and supports the death penalty for terrorists, drug traffickers, and pedophiles. Zirovnovsky is known for being a bit of a demagogue. He has said negative things about, promoted stereotypes about, and or have threatened to carpet bomb the following groups. Homosexuals, Muslims in general, Americans, Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Ukrainians, the Komi people, people from the North Caucasus, Jews, Turkish people both from Turkey and Central Asia, the Chinese, Poles, Romanians, and women. Zirovnovsky's huge personality has led some to claim that the party really is a party of Zirovnovsky, and besides that, they don't have any real strong ideological positions. The party's pro-Putin stance means obviously the opposition is distrustful of the party, seeing them as puppets with Zirovnovsky intentionally saying outrageous things in order to drive voters to the more sensible United Russia party. The party also has been accused of corruption and of selling parliamentary seats to rich businessmen. The last party I'll go in depth in is the Komunistia Partia Rossiya Federalistia, or the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, or CPRF. It is the second largest party in the country and is a communist party, arguing that the liberal reform of Russia in the 90s was a mistake and they should go back to either communist rule or at least introduce more socialist-like economic and domestic policy. It is probably the closest to an opposition party in the Duma, with it running against Putin in 2018 and vetoing his government and a decent chunk of their proposals. It is believed that most of the anti-establishment vote in the next election will be directed towards the party and its candidates. However, the party has been accused by some communists, other leftists, and members of the opposition of being puppets of the Kremlin, and like the LDPR, at the end of the day supporting Putin. There seems to be a gap between the party elite, who will hold more moderate and even positive views of Putin, and the party's rank and file, who oppose Putin and are more sympathetic towards the opposition in the country. It gets most of its support among older voters, particularly those in industrial areas and in the eastern regions of the country, the Volga region, and central Russia. It currently has 43 seats in the Duma, and the governors of Avhasia and the Oryo and Ulovnovsky Oblast are members of the party. It is currently led by Zhugani Zhugayev, a member of the state Duma, who also, as a fun fact, said Jesus was the first communist. But you never heard that one in Sunday school. The communists believe that Russia should abandon its capitalist system it has in place and return to the socialist economy of the USSR. However, it shouldn't be looked at as a party just advocating for a return to the USSR, as it does believe in freedom of religion, supports a patriotic view of Russia and Russian culture, and believes that small businesses should be allowed to exist, and several party members are even businessmen. It does, however, advocate for the nationalization of many sectors of the economy, especially those focused on natural resources. It argues that Putin and his allies have too much control over Russia, and wants to make elections fair for the opposition, and wants an independent judiciary. It also argues that education should be free, supports increased spending for healthcare, welfare, and education, believes the 8-hour work week should be mandatory, wants to annex the separatist region of the Ukraine, supports a strong Russia to combat NATO, and wants to reverse pension reform carried out by Putin. The communists claim to be the successors of the old communist party of the Soviet Union. This gives them both the backing of those nostalgic for the old regime, but also the distrust of those who suffered under it. The party believes that the death toll of the Holodomor, the Katyan massacre, and collectivization to be an exaggeration by historians and capitalists, which has led people to accuse them of defending the crimes of the USSR. The party has also been accused by some in the opposition of holding the same views of United Russia, especially in regards to foreign policy and development. Other leftists in Russia accuse the party of being communist in name only, and essentially being social democrats that are LARPing as communists. Finally, the party has been criticized for corruption, and that party leaders lack energy and are often connected to shady business dealings. So those are the parties present in the state Duma, but there are several more parties participating in the election on the 19th. While no party is projected to get past the 5% electoral threshold, it is believed to be entirely possible for several parties to win a seat or two from the single-member constituencies. Several of these parties are pro-government, like the Russian Ecology Party or New People, a center-right liberal party, with both parties being a part of the All-Russian People's Front. Also, update, I just looked at opinion polling, and apparently New People is polling at around 5-6%, to so they might get past that electoral threshold. There is also the Russian Party for Pensioners for Social Justice, a party for the elderly that endorsed Putin in the last election, the Party for Growth, a liberal conservative party that sits between the government and the opposition, and the Russian Party for Freedom and Justice, 
that is believed was created by the authorities to act as a spoiler party for the CPRF. There is Green Alternative, a moderate pro-EU environmentalist party. Then there is the Communists of Russia, not to be confused with the previous Communist Party of the Russian Federation. The party argues that the larger CPRF is too moderate, and serves as a Kremlin puppet, which the CPRF rejects, claiming that the Communists of Russia is a Kremlin puppet instead. And finally, we have Yablako, a social liberal party that has historically served as opposition towards Putin, and even at one point was the fourth largest party in the country. So those are the parties of Russia. Overall, you can tell Putin and the United Russia Party have a very large role in the country, but it certainly isn't a homogenous environment, with even the pro-Putin groups coming from several different ideological tendencies, and the country having several different colorful characters and unique parties. The election is again on the 17th to the 19th, I'm pretty confident Putin and his allies will keep a majority in the Duma, although with a larger opposition bloc in the Duma. Although, it's very possible I will be wrong, and evil Westerners like me are proven to be the hacks that we are. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope if you are from Russia listening to this, you vote on the 19th for a government that works well for you. Take care, and I hope you enjoyed. So after this, I'll do an episode on Portuguese political parties. I think I can get that done in like a week, so I might release it like either next Tuesday or next Thursday. And then I'll do the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and then I'll do French political parties, which I will use to introduce French territorial politics. So yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have requested something, thank you for requesting it. I will try to get to it as soon as I can. I know it takes a while. I apologize. But I promise I will try my best to get to everyone. If you want to email me, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.